Welcome to today's School of Evangelism. Today's lesson number 22. Lesson number 22. In today's teaching, we are going to be learning about three kinds of unbelief. Three kinds of unbelief. And we are going to be learning about four dimensions of faith. Four dimension of faith. This is the revelation knowledge that is going to draw me to our spirit. With that revelation knowledge, we can't lead. We cannot evangelize the world because the gospel is the power of God to salvation. The solution in God. And this is in the gospel. I will say that I want you to share this and tell your friend right now. Tell your friend. Let's pray the word of God all over the world. I will say that let us go to the presence of God in prayer. Father, we want to thank you. We want to thank you very much, O God. Because this world is full of problems. But answer is in the spirit realm. I give you praise, O God, for the gospel of God. Jesus, the power of God to salvation. I give you praise. Life is being changed right now. Thank you, Father. Thank you for those who are tuning right now and for those who are going to tune in after this session. We give all the glory for the light of the gospel. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So I welcome to today's uh, teaching. This is School of Evangelism, lesson number 22. Today I'm going to be teaching about three kinds of unbelief and four dimensions of faith. And the theme of this message is what to do when you don't know what to do. Are you being challenged right now by your health? Especially for this COVID-19. Has gone all over the world. Are you be disappointed by your relationship, by your spouse? Are you be disappointed by your finance, your finance situation, your take home? It's not enough to take you home. You are in the right place right now, listening to the word of God. What to do when you don't know what to do? Yes. That word came from the mouth of King Jehoshaphat in 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verse 12. When this king was surrounded by three powerful nations, the nation of Mobilites, the nation of Ammonites, and the nation of Edomites, surrounded him. He looked left and right as war. And he don't know what to do. He cry out in Second Chronicle twenty twelve. Say, Lord, my eyes is upon thee. That's all we need to do now. When the words are going around, running like shaking without help, that is not your portion. In the Lord, a solution we are finding today. In fact, Jesus said in Matthew chapter seventeen, verse. 20 and 21. If you, if you have faith like a mustard seed, you can speak to mortal to move. It shall move. Nothing shall be impossible to you. Nothing. Nothing. But how do you do that? How do you do that? How do you do that and still remain, retain your sanity in this world? Jesus pointed out in verse 21, he said, this cannot happen except by prayer and fasting. Just as Jehoshaphat was declared, three days prayer and fasting in 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verses 1 and 3, he, he declared three days prayer and fasting. Look, listen, in our church, we are going for three days Prayer and fasting. Start from May 1st to 3rd. Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. There are going, there's going to be 
opportunity open up when we can look unto God. You watch the clear three days. But do you know within 24 hours, within 24, there was a abundance in the land of Judah. Read the second Corinthians 20. 24 hours. The enemy were confused. They clean each other. So listen to me right now. Every enemy in your life is going to be confused right now. When we understand this, Jesus said, With that prayer and fasting, you cannot even speak to mountain to move. Prayer and fasting. So listen, fasting, there's nothing spiritual about fasting. You don't cast out the devil by fasting. No, you don't please God by fasting. What casts out the devil is the name of Jesus. What precedes God is faith, not our fasting. Fasting does not relate to Christian alone. All religion, this was fast. I remember in the book of Acts, there was a group of people said, we are not going to eat until we keep up. People fast all the time. Even in the medical field, if you are going for surgery, major surgery, the doctor will let you know, don't eat before you come. So there's nothing supernatural in fasting. What fasting does is this. Fasting subdue your flesh. Because the voice of flesh is fat. The voice of flesh is fat. It will echo to you what you see. We call it senses. You move by what you see. The flesh. The flesh receives information from the outside. The flesh go back five, first five senses. What you see, what you smell, what you taste, what you hear, what you touch. Flesh will say it is over. But when you are fasting, so fasting will subdue that flesh. Hallelujah. Then it's not enough to fast. You have to pray. What prayer does, prayer, listen to me, relate to your spirit man. If you are born again, when you are in prayer, when you are fasting and in prayer, now, that prayer will relate to your spirit man. It will echo the voice of spirit. The voice of spirit is faith. Faith is the voice of spirit. The voice of spirit is revelation. Revelation. You see things in the spiritual realm. Hallelujah. So when you are in fasting, fasting so do your flesh for prayer, listen to me, echo the voice of your spirit, your sweet man. You the creator sweet man. That's the way we echo that out. But the third aspect of it is you go to the word of God. You begin to read who you are in Christ. You begin to read. You don't just, if you fast and pray, you don't know who you are in Christ. That is called hunger strife. Hunger strife. The problem is just so for a while. But you come back again. But when you pray, you fast, you read from the scripture who you are in Christ. <laughs> Glory be to God. Then you speak to mountain. Mountain of failure. Mountain of disappointment. Mountain of discouragement. You speak to mountain to live. Because you'll be spiritually aware. You know, when God spoke to Moses to go and deliver the Israelites in Genesis, in Exodus chapter 3, you know what he said in verse 11? He said, who I am to go and deliver the Israelites. This is from Pharaoh. Pharaoh is looking after me. That is what he means. Who am I? When I was born, I was abandoned. Who am I? Who am I? I don't even know my identity because I was trained up like a, like a king's kids. I was living in palace. All of a sudden, when I realized that I did not belong to the Egyptian, I tried to relate to my family. I was just disappointed. Are you being disappointed? That's what Moses said. Moses said to the God, he said, who I am. So activities stem from identity. You have to know who you are. Then rewards stem from activity. Look at the sequence. Uh, uh, look at the way it goes. It's the sequence. Activities stem from your identity. 
and rewards them from added activities. That is the sequence. You need to know who you are in Christ first. And that is what we are doing in this week, in this teaching. Who you are in Christ. So God replied to Moses in Exodus chapter 3, verse 14. Look at what God says. God said, I am that I am sent you. Look at that. Listen, God said, it is not a matter of who you are in your flesh. It's a matter of who I am. It just means that God cannot do anything in this realm. Listen to me. Without human vessel. He wants to walk through us. When you have the revelation of who you are in Christ, there's no limitation. You are, you are in Christ. God said, I am. As I said in lesson number 21, I said, God said, I am, not I became. If God said, I became, it means there was a time that it wasn't God. No, but he said, I am. He said, I am. He didn't say, I can become, which means God is not really who he is. No, it's I am. <laughs> Praise God. And he not say, I am going to be. Listen, God don't develop. God don't grow. God is. When you don't know what to do, when you don't know what to do, you have to find out, first of all, who you are in Christ. Very important. That's what prayer and fasting does. You find out who are you in Christ. Praise God. So let me read something to you in the book of uh, Philemon. I will read it. It's only one chapter. It's next to Hebrew. Please, if you, are so, if you are just joining us, the message today is what to do when you don't know what to do. This is part two in this school of uh, evangelism. This uh, evangelism school lesson number 22, but this is part two of this subtopic. What to do when you don't know what to do. And if you want to download this note in a third, you go to our watch, our God's, uh, our website, our church website, God Family Church, RR, for Rhode Island, dot org. You can download it full notes. God sent me to go and teach the body of Christ. So you can do the work of the master because Jesus is on the way. This COVID-19 will not usher in Jesus, but it's a preparation. It's a preparation. Jesus said, you see this famine disease all over. Matthew 24, verse 8. He said, this is the beginning of sorrow. This is not the beginning of the world. What is going to collapse? No. But this is the beginning of the end of human endeavor to protect itself. We cannot, we need another power. We need supernatural power. And it's going to work through the church. And it's, it's going to work through the church. Those individuals who realize who they are in Christ. Who they are in Christ. Not in, the, not in your flesh. That was what Moses meant when he said, Lord, I can't go. He remember that in my flesh I'm nobody. Don't take care of your flesh. You subdue your flesh with prayer and fasting. Look at what Philemon says. Philemon is only one letter. Verse 6 says, chapter 1, verse 6, say that the communication of their faith may become effectual. Listen to that. But acknowledging of every good thing which is in you, the you that is in Christ, it's not in your flesh. When you realize you are in Christ, did you know the word in Christ in the page of the Bible? In the gospel, in the peace, especially in the epistle, it's over 130 times. In Christ, in Christ, or with Christ. He said, when you begin to acknowledge who you are, your faith will go to the next level. I want to read this in Amplified Bible. I don't know what, you, what you're going to write down. You have some symptoms in your body. All your finance is going down. All your head is failing you. Look up to who you are in Christ now. Very important. I will read it from, um, I will read the final name. It's only one chapter. Chapter one, verse six. In the Amplified Bible. That's the power, mighty power in your spirit to be now. 
talk about Bible say, and I pray that the participation in and sharing of your faith may produce and promote full recognition. <laughs> this is wonderful. And appreciation and understanding and precise knowledge of every good things that is in ours in our identification with Christ. Hear that. And unto his glory. When you identify yourself with Christ, when you study, you are in Christ. Through prayer, through fasting, through the word of God. You read the word of God to find out who you are in Christ. Praise God. You study that Second Chronicle 20, you see what happened. In fact, God said it in verse 15. Second Corinthians 20, 15. He said, this, this battle is not you. Are you going through problem in your finance, in your church? A sense of pastor and worship me right now. You don't know what to do. You don't meet in the church no more. The offering is down. But let me tell you, praise the Lord. The battle is not yours. Say that with me. This battle is not mine. It's of the Lord. And we are going there today. We'll talk about three kinds of unbelief. And for damnation of faith in this series. In this series. Praise God. See, when you begin to act, oh, you are in Christ. You know, you know what um, the old chapter said in 2 Chronicles 20, verse 12. He said, Our eyes is unto thee. And David said that too, Psalm 24. So I will leave my eyes upon the mountain. Do you know in this era, in this gospel age, hey, listen to me, you don't look unto mountain no more. You don't look heaven no more. Heaven is side in you. Hallelujah. So you begin to act out. Listen to me. You begin to act out from the inside out. You don't allow the environment, what has happened, to build conviction. No. You go out according to who you are on the inside. When it comes to prayer, there are three kinds of people. When it comes to challenge, there are three kinds of people. When it comes to battle of life, there are three kinds of people. Listen. Those who pray, are you listening to me? And those who act, they don't act. Some people pray, they don't act. Some people act, they don't pray. But the third group of people, those who pray and act. You pray and you put what God says about you into action. The problem is that, do you know you are in Christ? Hallelujah. In Exodus chapter 14, verse 10, when Egyptian was coming and Pharaoh to Capture the people of God and they are the brink of the Red Sea. The Red Sea before them, and France, all his army is after them. In verse 10, a crown to God, Exodus chapter 14, verse 10. And the next verse, verse 11, they, they begin to complain to Moses. Say, we want to die in this place, we are going to die in this place. To complain to Moses. Can you imagine? You don't pray and complain. You pray, you pull your prayer into action. But the problem, how do you put it to action if you don't even know you are? And that's what takes me to the, the dimension of faith. So who pray? Listen, as I said before, if you pray, if you fast, you read your Bible, and you don't even know you are in Christ. That is called hunger strike. The problem will come back again. But when you pray, you begin to echo the voice of your spirit man. When you fast, you begin to subdue your flesh from the voice of environment. But you need to read who you are in Christ so you can be led by the Spirit. Not by your flesh, by the Spirit. Praise God. So the dimension of faith. Four. I will not be able to go through it today, but I will just mention them. The fourth dimension of faith is saving faith. So that is what it Take you into the kingdom. You are saved by faith. I will explain that in the next session. The second dimension of is most holy faith. When you begin to speak in tongues, you begin to know you are in Christ. And you can go out. You char fully charge. You can go and bring souls into the kingdom. This evangelism, when you begin to lead by your spirit, you begin to bring people into the kingdom. You don't live by your emotion. 
So I will, I will explain that in the next time. The, the next one is gift of faith. And the fourth one is God's kind of faith. Those are going to explain the next session. You don't want to miss that. But meanwhile, you can go to my Facebook page, our church Facebook page, God's Family Church, ri.org. You get the full page, you feel full notes of today's message. Very, very important. What can you do when you don't know what to do? Don't depend on your flesh. You look unto God here on the inside of you. You are born again. The power of God is here. Ephesians 3.20 says, Ephesians 3.20, unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundant above all we can ask of him. According to the power that lives in us. Don't depend on the flesh we fail you. Don't depend on people we fail you, I'm telling you. You depend on God on the inside of you. Who you are. The Bible says, greater I see that is in you. We are going to be teaching on four dimensions of faith in lesson number 23. This is how we can lead people. Jesus said the last word of Jesus when he was going in Mark 16, 15. He said, go to the world and preach the gospel. As you listen to me, all of us may not be a full-time pastor or full-time evangelist, but we are a full-time Christian. Every born again, you are a full-time Christian. So you have four worlds that surround you. The spirit of your interest, your family. You live by faith in their presence. You invite them to the spirit journey in this area that people are confused. What are the places of employment? Your colleague you are working with. You lead them when they complain, tell them. I'm telling you, COVID 19 is going to pass. It's not here to stay. It's not here to stay. It is the glorious church, the church that led by the spirit that will usher Jesus when the gospel is spread over the world. What of your people in the social contact? You have many people you can touch in course. Social contact? Can't it? Praise God. Your, your friend. There's four kinds of world that's around you now. They need help. The help of man is in vain. Money cannot help people no more. Government, they don't need they don't know what is happening. But look on the inside. The street pain. Well, in, in lesson number 23, I will be talking, I will be teaching on those four dimensions of faith. So you can bring people into the kingdom. All we need to do, tell them, meet me on the line. The next session on Friday, lesson number 23. It's going to be powerful. This is where you are for, to bring souls into the kingdom by your contact. God bless you. If you are not saved, Raise your hand towards him. Say this one after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I give my life to you. Come and be my Lord and my Savior. Say amen to that. You said that? Welcome to the family of God. I want to join my faith with your faith. Everyone and the sound of my voice now. You stretch out your hand. I want to join you. Miracle is happening. Yesterday I received a message that the thing that looked impossible about a month ago, God did it within weeks. In weeks, I'm not going to detail, but in days, I'm read all those testimonies. On Sunday, I receive another message. So you are next. I don't know what you are facing. You are next. Are you being threatened by this COVID-19? Are you have the sin on your body? Don't know what to do? You can go to God in faith. I know I've not explained the three kinds of faith today. The three kinds of unbelief. The three kinds of unbelief and four kinds of four dimensions of faith is going to be our next one. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I pray for you today. Everyone, some a sound of my voice right now. Healing is taking place in your life. Deliverance in your emotion. Yes, I send that your emotion. Deliverance. I come again. The spirit of fear. Lose a host now. Lose a host and go. Le kubo Release that anointing upon you now to destroy every joke in your church, in your home, in your family. I come against that attack. You are delivered. Yes, I'm hearing that in my spirit. You are set free. Thank you, Jesus. That's the one for somebody. You are free now. 
Come on, don't forget to contact me. Go to my messenger, contact me right now. And let me know what God is doing in your life. Hallelujah. Share this message with your friends. Share with your family. Share with your social contact. And make a watch prayer for it. i see you again on Friday. Remember, Jesus loves you. And Jesus is love. Amen.